Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 8.1 2018 184C72E69. And for the first time that I'm doing one of these Autopilot videos, this one is in glorious 4K. I got a brand new Blackview dash cam, the DR, or sorry, yeah, DR900S. Dash 2CH, meaning two channel, which is the version that's got the front and the rear camera. Previously, all these videos were recorded with the 650 model, the 650S two channel, um, which was ostensibly 1080p 60 frames per second, but honestly, it, it seemed like it was a little bit less than that. And here we're going into our standard loop. It's taking that very nicely. Let's see if it drifts into the bike lane a little bit on the outside. No, not really. And going back the other way. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, and there's the nag because we're taking some sharp turns. So I'll um, give it a little tug on the wheel and I'll hang a right and we'll do our standard loop to see how it goes. So my intention for this video is this is sort of my control group experiment. Uh, this is going to be probably the last video that I do on this particular loop because as we've seen from the last like umpteenth videos that I've done um, This loop isn't that challenging for the for autopilot anymore So I'm gonna look for something that's a little bit more challenging But just to make sure that we didn't you know backslide on the progress before I moved on to the next loop I wanted to make sure that I did at least one more video using the existing loop to make sure that the results came out consistently so I mentioned this a little bit in the last video, but um, one thing that I've noticed both um, before and after having gotten the navigation beta update is that um, Tesla has been cracking down, at least in my area, of which local roads uh, it'll actually cap you to five miles per hour over the posted speed limit. The speed limit detection has gotten better. I still haven't seen any evidence of doing things like reading signs, um, but the, the GPS data fidelity seems to have improved. All right, and we'll go over the train tracks, which will probably trip my G sensor on the dash cam, so I'll probably have to stitch this video together in Adobe Premiere. See what happens. Eh, I didn't hear a chirp. Maybe we're okay. Of course, it's a new camera. I might have forgotten to turn on the chirp, so. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to slow down because that carpool in front of me. Yeah. Felt like it was back and yeah, it backed off on the power just a smidge. And now that the um, the speed limit has gone up, it's automatically sped back up to 45 miles per hour, which is nice. Thankfully, I'm not coming through here during school zone time this time, so we don't have to slow down for that. But yeah, we'll just follow this normal section like we do. Although, admittedly, the section's gotten a little bit easier since they painted these nice clean lines for the autopilot. Give the wheel a little tug. I mean, if we can come up on the red light, then we can see how well the stopped car detection is going. Stopped car detection has been working awesomely. Um, very, very rare exception do I feel like I need to intervene. And even then, I'm not, you know, 100% sure that I needed to. It's just more of a question of general safety and not wanting to leave it to the last minute in case it turns out that the autopilot was smoking something and, and wasn't going to, oh yeah, look at that. Starts slowing down well ahead. All right, let's see what happens when this guy moves out of the way. And it will, it still sees this car in front of us, so it's not, it's not accelerating back into that car. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, yep, <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm actually gonna, well, just for the heck of it, let's take a different route today. Um, so I'm actually taking this old road that's kind of twisty and, and curvy. And I am gonna manually notch the speed down on this and I'm gonna be real careful because we're about to go under a bridge and this section of road is very narrow. So if it drifts out of the lane at all, I could potentially be running into something. So I'm gonna very carefully monitor. Plus it's also kind of a blind corner. Oh, nice. Oh, it handled that pretty well. I don't know if I want to want to take in that corner at 45, but yeah, no, it did a great job. So yeah, as I we was saying earlier, um, when 
full speed auto steer was enabled for local roads, um, the GPS data that was provided for the speed limits was not really, most roads, even though they were obviously being picked up as local roads because it wouldn't give you the option of changing lanes while you're on those roads, um, a, a significant number of local roads, especially if they were more than like two lanes in each, if there were two lanes or more in each direction, um, they would not actually cap you to five miles per hour over the speed limit, which was something that, um, in my autopilot one car, the car was very draconian about, you know, every local road, it was capped to five miles per hour with the speed limit. I never really had the opportunity to go faster than that if I wanted to. Um, since they enabled full steer, full speed auto steer for local roads, I found a ton of roads were enabled for, um, greater than five miles per hour over, or a lot of roads also, and these are roads, just to be clear, that did have speed limits detected on them. So it wasn't a question of, you know, the speed limit was 25, the car didn't know the speed limit was 25, so it capped you at like, I think 35 or 45, whatever the, whatever the cap is for if it doesn't know the speed limit. That wasn't the scenario that I'm describing. I'm describing a scenario where the speed limit very clearly showed up in the dash, be it correct or not, which was kind of another issue, because honestly they were, they were pretty off most of the time. Um, but it would allow you to set the speed to pretty much whatever you wanted But it was clearly not picking up as a highway because it did not give you the prompt to be able to change lanes while you were driving on that local road um, That has been shifting significantly um, the, the GPS data um, even before switching over to the beta like as it pertains to all right, I'm gonna disengage here as it pertains to the autopilot and the auto steer has been getting updated on the Tesla side. Now I know that they said that the existing GPS system was a bit of a black box. They couldn't do anything with it. Now exactly where that ties into how autopilot determines whether or not a road is a local road or a highway or somewhere in between, which it seems to be registering these roads as, um, that I don't have any information on, unfortunately. But now that the speed, I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that, um, they're capping down to five miles per hour over, or I should say I'm, I'm not upset by it because they have been improving the accuracy. And this is something that happened, like I said, before they started doing the beta, they have been improving the accuracy of the speed limit detection in various areas around here. Um, when they had initially flipped the map database, uh, over to the new database that they were using. Um, the new database was wildly inaccurate where I live. Like highways had wrong speeds. A lot of local roads had wrong speeds. When it was accurate, it was very accurate. Um, like it would flip like the second it would pass a speed limit sign, even though it very obviously wasn't reading those speed limit signs. But it was just inaccurate in a ton of places. So I'm really glad that at that time they weren't capping to five miles per hour for the speed limit because more often than not, I read the speed limit as being too low. All right, let's see what happens when I come up on this 35 mile an hour sign. No, still thinks it's 40. Okay, so I'm gonna drop it down so I'm not going as fast as 10 miles per hour with the speed limit. That was not my intention. So we have auto steer engaged here. Some old funky bumpy roads and we'll see how everything goes. But generally speaking, I mean, I've been very happy with the performance of Autopilot. Um, the biggest issue that I have right now is just, because I'm also updating the, the versioning spreadsheet, is just, they need to start releasing some features. You know, we, we keep getting all these incremental updates with no release notes, and I keep testing all these new versions of Autopilot, which, you know, ever, ever since the last big update, they all really seem like they're working just fine. Um, you know, you see it handling these intersections just fine. It's doing an admirable job at, at what it's being asked to do right now. Let's make sure it doesn't run into this median. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty trustworthy in most circumstances. Um, uh, you know, just like everybody else, I'm, I'm waiting on those enhanced autopilot features. You know? I want to see it start doing highway interchange. That doesn't seem like a significant jump from what the car is capable of doing today. I mean, it's capable of navigating. It's capable of doing automatic lane change on highways. I feel like we should be able to get highway interchange. And this was a feature that, if you remember, was actually originally promised to be released for Autopilot 1 cars. Um, but, uh, yeah, because I, I believe, if I remember correctly, auto, um, highway interchange was actually... Um, announced as something that was coming in a pending update prior to the announcement of Hardware 2. But uh, yeah, fast forward literally two years later and uh, yeah, we still don't have it. So yeah, just waiting on some new features. Hopefully, you know, we'll start getting some updates here 
pretty soon, but we'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, thanks everybody for watching.